Alright guys, today I'm going to be cleaning up this 2008 Nissan Maxima. I ordered a new fog light so we should be able to get that taken care of. This thing was garage kept most of its life so it's still in pretty good condition. But uh, I think we can improve upon most of these surfaces. The car's already been thoroughly washed and it's had an Iron X treatment applied to it to get rid of any iron particles. So I'm going to jump right into clay barring followed by a paint correction stage. And then I'm going to be using a product by 303 to put a nice top coat on it that'll stay glossy and repel water for up to six months. Definitely hard to see all the defects on this white paint but hopefully there's a noticeable before and after difference. So before you get started you want to make sure there's nothing on top of the paint and that it's absolutely clean bare paint before you start correcting. A good habit to get into when you're paint correcting is use a paint gauge to check the door, door jams. Ninety five point eight, one hundred and forty nine on the roof. You always want to check a few spots. So the roof is right around one hundred and fifty. And the door jam, as we checked, was about 95. This just gives us a good idea of how much paint we have to work with. Because typically, manufacturers don't want to spend extra money. So uh, they'll coat the door jams as thin as possible to save money. And uh, you know these areas still have a healthy amount of clear coat on them. So it gives you a good idea of how much paint you have to work with when you're correcting paint. Yeah, under 100 in all the door jams. So my paint depth gauge won't work on plastic, it won't do that substrate, it only does aluminum substrates, so that's why I'm getting no reading here at all. Spoiler's plastic too. Trunk's aluminum. So we had about 100, a little less than 100 in all the door jams and averaged about 150, 160 on the paint all around. So we have plenty of paint to work with in the correction process. I'm going to be using Optimum No Rinse Wash and Wax. One cap full of this to 32 ounces of distilled water for my clay lubricant. I just keep my clay in a watertight tackle box that I got from Walmart. It was like four bucks and it works great. So now that I've got my Opti Rinse and 32 ounces of distilled water mixed up, you want to use plenty of lubricant and keep folding your clay over whenever you see it getting full of debris. As long as you have plenty of lubricant, keep your clay fresh, you should be able to go around the whole car and have no issues. As you're doing this and going back and forth with your clay, you'll feel it get smoother as the clay literally removes contaminants. Do you remember how you held me thin? Now you got me reaching out. Got me falling in more times than I can get out.
My car's clean. I just washed it. Yeah, about that. Embedded contaminants are still a thing. This was just from the driver's side half of this roof. Totally filthy. So this was my microfiber towel. Basically what it looked like before I started using it. Nice clean yellow. And while waxing, I used this to dry up the lubricant. This is how dirty just the liquid that I used for lubricant for the, uh, the clay bar was. This doesn't include contaminants stuck in the clay bar. That's just what the clay bar freed up in the liquid. I mean, pretty big difference. On darker color cars, you can actually notice a pretty big difference just clay barring. But uh, on this white paint, it's hard to tell. Now that I'm completely clay barred, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start correcting. I'm gonna start off with a test spot to figure out what pad and uh, compound slash polish combo I need that'll work best for the most majority of the car and uh, get going. I think I'm gonna do my test spot right here on the back of the trunk because if it'll take out these bit deeper, more noticeable imperfections, then it should do great for the rest of the car. Not to mention it will be easy to keep a nice little one foot by one foot square right here. Get it figured out. Now after the decontamination process, you've washed it, you've used an iron remover, you've clay barred it. Um, the final step is to use a prep spray that will remove any oils, waxes, basic residue, anything left on the car before starting the correction process. I'm going to be using QTM prep by Gion. Somehow I've managed to mess up my pretty bottle, but uh, it'll still do the job. Um, you can also use G-Technic's panel wipe, or 70% isopropyl alcohol, or your own concoction for surface prep. Just make sure to get everything off the surface so it's nice and clean and dry. Get you a nice clean microfiber and uh, prep that panel. This Meguiar's water magnet drying towel came highly recommended on a detailing Facebook group that I follow. So uh, I'm going to use it to dry up my prep spray and see how it does. For only like 8 bucks on Amazon, I would say this thing's doing just fine. If you can see these scratches right here in the light, um, it's probably about the worst defects in the paint on the car. So that's what I'm going to be using about a one foot section here. And then on the spoiler, I've got some spots from the trees that uh, I'm going to be trying to get out as well. I'm going to be using a medium wool polishing pad from Rupes with my 6 inch bower from Harbor Freight. I'm going to be using the DA course from Rupes New Line. This compound should uh, definitely make it easy getting rid of these defects with the wool pad.
So I'm going to be using 303's graphite nano spray coating. This is basically like wax, but better. It sprays on and it'll give you real world protection for up to about six months. So I'm going to go over the car one more time now that I've corrected the paint and use my prep spray to get any oils, any contaminants, any left behind residue, any, any dusting off the paint to make sure it's uh, nice and clean. And then I'm probably going to use a foam block applicator and a micro suede square to apply this everywhere. If you haven't noticed now, having a super clean looking ride, doing paint correction, getting the nice finish that you're after, a lot of it is in the prep work. After that, it'll look pretty good.